Welcome to a beautiful morning out here at the river house. Uh, since uh, that last video, which you know, took forever to get up, um, lots and lots and lots of stuff has actually gone on. We, we got rid of our brush pile. We raked back and leveled this, you know, to some extent with the excavator. There was a rock ledge right here it's sitting on. And I was able to to work at that till I, I broke up a large portion of it. Just standing here, standing here looking at it, I can I can still tell we're sloped towards the house. But not as bad as we once were. I don't need to check a plumb level on my lawn. Just get her close. But we do have a tremendous amount more room. Everything I'm sitting on is essentially fill. And I only launched one rock off the edge down there. So I can't really go any farther. This this road, I'll get dad to bring the dozer up. But this road will come up through here. I'll have to stack rocks along that edge, come up through there. And then that's that's how we'll access the top of the hill without driving through the lawn. I just don't I don't think I'll be able to break the rock I need to get in up there. It's too much work, not enough time. Equipment is too broken. Yada yada yada. All of the roofing metal is on both sides and you see I got I got the drip edge installed at least on on this edge right here. I got the fascia up. I need, I need to touch up my paint right up there. Stain. I got my fascia up on well these two sides and the center ridge. I can't yet reach the back and I haven't yet done all of the other side because then I have to take my ladder down and I use the ladder to access the roof. So I can't I can't remove that until after after all the soffit is up on that upper level. Insulation came. Originally I thought that we had gotten a mistake. There should be the R15 for the crawl space floor down in here, the R15 for the 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 vertical walls in the bathroom. Don't worry about it. It's uh, where, where there an exterior wall. And then uh, some some soundproofing stuff. There also should be the R30 that was half of the rest of the, the ceiling stuff. My favorite. And I noticed I got all R15 15 16 inch and I, I should have a bunch of R15 that's 23 inch to go with the R30 to give me an R45 in the ceiling and none of that is here and I, I need to count it up to make sure I didn't I didn't accidentally get too much R15 like they the warehouse guys saw R15 and, and didn't really put the 23 inch part on there and, and just and just loaded me it looked like I had a lot of it when it got dropped off but now I'm recognizing that I, I think I think I'm just looking at the cellar stuff so I'm still waiting on some R23 so once again it means I can't actually finish can't finish the ceilings or uh, start on the interiors. Not that it matters, because I also I, I can't get stuff. <coughs> well, that's not true, right? We could call the bank and just spend more money, but it, it sure feels really dumb to arbitrarily spend an additional. I'm checking my mouse traps. An additional twenty. 25% probably on average. It sure seems dumb to do that on a, on a project that's already a little pricey. 
more so than we budgeted. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but the uh, the bathtubs, the shower tub stall thing. I've never known anybody that did tile and didn't have it leak. So we're doing a full full surround fiberglass. I know it's not the highest whatever, but uh, this guy's not a tiler. Never done it before, and that doesn't seem like a place to start. So full surround fiberglass tubs, and um, both of them arrived, just smashed all to hell. Why they even put them on the truck to haul them the 100 miles out here to unload them so that we could all, including the driver, go, oh yeah, those are broken, and put it all back on his truck? Seemed like such a huge waste. You guys could have flagged that at the store. Anyways, they got rejected, so no mice. You know, those were already a full month uh, wait, so we're, we're a full month out again. So you can't do any of the bathrooms, which means I can't do the bathroom walls. Yeah, I guess it's been a lot of time, but not a lot has changed. Not a lot has changed. Well, I can't do any of the metal trim work, and I've been working on I've been working on that, and I'm getting better at it. And you know what? Let's just let's just climb the ladder. We can't walk on the roof; it's too wet right now. But we can climb the ladder, and I'll I'll show you. No, actually, it turns out the roof is is relatively dry. So we got fascia. This is cedar from. My grandfather's place before he passed. Due to the way I built it, which means incorrectly, the idea was that this would simply wrap all the way over. But these are, because we wanted the massive overhangs, these are a full two by six rafter tail instead of a two by four rafter tail, which it would be if you know, it was only a two foot overhang. It was a design choice. I'm an idiot. Anyways, um, this was all bought because then it would just hook over and I put my stuff behind it. But nah, because, because of my choice there, it would mean that you would see the edge of my soffit. And I have to have soffit because when I was putting up the roof trusses I didn't quite get the spacing perfect so we've had to scab on in order to attach plywood it's, it's not what I do for a living right so some mistakes were made it's not that big a deal but it now means I have to I have to put up soffit in here and you can't have the edges of your soffit sticking down because they'll swell and look like crap so this has to stick down and so what this is is an imaginary seven inch wide it's not really seven inches wide I just hold the board down but it's an imaginary seven inches wide so the board you know doesn't actually come up into here and then this wraps over and covers all of it Shay and I got whatever that cornery bit is called and you can see the edges are up the edges are up because apparently you're supposed to split those and cut it back and then Slip them together, kind of telescoping. I didn't. Not a person in the world, but you and me can see this. So get your licks in. Look at that one. God, that guy's an idiot. Um, and then no one will ever know it's up here again. It won't leak. Same goes with this stuff. I was actually getting some really nice joints. But of course down there, um, there was a weird screw up and... These, these things, you know, they were short by like eight inches. So there's a, no one can see it from the ground. I mean, literally, you cannot see this face. Can't see it, can't see it. You'd have to, you'd have to hike up the hill. I got, the, I got the essentials. It's all lapped the correct direction for the wind. So the wind, which always blows this way, is blowing not into the lap seams. And, uh, and it's all screwed down, it won't come off. Some of this is still lacking. That bottom edge is now 
is now screwed off except for the last little piece over there. These, the bottom edge isn't done yet because I'm, I'm slipping the drip edge in. By the way, if you're following this to, to kind of learn about how to do it yourself, stop. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, you know, I knew the drip edge was supposed to go on first, but there were, you couldn't put the drip edge on until you put all the fascia trim up, and I couldn't put all the fascia trim up until all the scaffolding came down, and I can't take all the scaffolding down until I clear some rocks so I can get the bucket truck up in there. Anyways, I couldn't. So I left the bottom row of screws out, and I just slipped the fascia trim in. It does mean that if any water I get on my roof surface, you, you should put you should put your drip edge and then use your like your zip tape to seal it and and that way any water would have to go over the top of your drip edge and down mine doesn't um, it'll go behind my drip edge but yeah oh and I got I got my adhesive foam blocks in there there should not be a way should not be a way for water to get up in there I mean, that's why we did this over there in the center where the chimney still has to go through. I don't know how to do that. Um, and I don't own it. <laughs> where the chimney has to go through, uh, I didn't put the mastic in so that I could lift those sheets out of the way. Otherwise, they're even all mastic together, which is largely unheard of around here, but I got a mastic strip, so. I did, I did not mastic each overlap joint. That's, that's, that's insane. That's, you know, that's a flatter roof. That's uh, an ice dam country kind of thing. Uh, that, that, that would just not be necessary out here. So I don't have that. I just have between the two sheets so the wind can't push water up and wick in between. Which I'll tell you it does, because on my deck, my deck roof is that clear plastic sheeting and it's relatively flat and there's no mastic because it's clear plastic sheeting and, and I did it and uh, I'll be dang if it doesn't wick up like six inches it's also an overlap enough but it like wick up six inches and in drip uh, in a drizzle it's kind of weird but anyways this this nonetheless I'm proud of this basically it now means that worse comes to worse the money runs out the economy goes to crap I can't get me anything um, I can just screw the door shut and walk away, knowing that she'll sit here, rain, rind, shine, and and be and be just fine. So I'm proud of that. Uh, I appreciated Dad being up, and willing to 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 at least go through and double check my squaring and get the first first sheet or two on uh, over here on this side, and then. You know, Danny and I did it ourselves. We'd left that corner to last, and I would lift eight sheets of metal up at a time, and then, and then we would do the roof, and then those last few sheets, um, I put stringers up on top, and set them up there, and then we, we put them in. That's about it. It's gonna do a cool, artistic, time-lapsey, moving insulation thing, but I forgot, I forgot the time-lapse camera, so instead, you just get all this and a hearty welcome out here to the river house. There's the river. It's beautiful today. We've got all this ponderosa around here. And beetle kill and a bunch of it. So large dead standing that we can access and it really bothers Shay that his grandfather and I keep refusing to cut any of it up to build the house with. I, I just can't convince him. Yeah. You can't trust, you can't trust Ponderosa. Maybe big posts, vertical load big posts. Other than that, you can't trust Ponderosa. Just, just had myself a little reminder as to why. I'm working on the hidden cubby holey thing back here, putting the insulation up in what is Shay's bedroom floor in preparation for putting up 
Well, just do what I can do, right? I can get siding. So, in preparation for putting up um, some siding or something back there. And uh, so I have a temporary platform and I built it. I built it out of Ponderosa studs that we had made up to use for the concrete framing. These were extras. And uh, yeah, I went right through it. This is the one that failed. Took out that one right alongside of it and just went down. I mean, they are on 24 inch centers. It is just uh, a work platform. Got, I got a bunch done. I'm all the way to the trap door with insulation and with um, caulking and whatnot. I'm all the way to this point. You can see uh, where, where I stopped. And probably figure out why. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to take him a picture, but that is why they don't make lumber out of Ponderosa. You just you just can't trust it. I believe they do use it for like pressure treated stuff, maybe. I'm I'm gonna feel this in the morning. Yeah. We're, we're, we're about to get back on this horse. <laughs> I've got some other studs. Um, and I'm not actually going to swap out the ones that have already proven to hold me up. Though I might be a little more tender. The goal, get this all the way insulated at least, at least to where a little bit of wiring comes through. And then get and paint the back side of that log. You think I should pump caulking into those cracks? Nah, I'll just paint it. But get the back side of that all painted, which is a somewhat useless task, but it's it's on the list, right? Check. And at the end of the day, it won't be. <laughs> provided I can stay up here. Morning. We're back for another beautiful day here at the old river house. Just walking through the canyon. And this is what we got done yesterday. The insulation is in all the way to right here. I still have these two bays to do. I painted that beam. No idea why I missed that. I have no recollection of of missing that spot right there. None whatsoever. Um, but clearly I missed a spot right there. As far as why I do stuff like that, well, I mean, this is just me being dumb. Uh, I know it didn't need to be done, but there is a small perverse pleasure in making even a tiny check mark in terms of I don't have to come back. That's finished. I mean, all the rest of the stuff and the trim has got to go on, but that's finished. So it's it's like a satisfaction thing. Whew. Even if it's minor. But yeah, the platform is is rebuilt. These these two here are still Ponderosa, so I'll be I'll be careful. Uh, I guess that's it, really. Once that's done, I guess we can move insulation other places. I can keep putting it up, too. Yeah. I won't take this down until... Well, we'll, we'll do the, the ceiling there and all the trim work. And once we... I guess get oh I'll take some of it down because I won't be able to get windows in. Well, that's still not that big a deal. But anyways, once once this stuff is done and we've got that at least the top part of that siding off or on, then we'll get that taken down. 
Continue the rock wall in here and then backfill this area so it can start to settle. We still gotta get a motor in that dump truck though. It's on the list. It's a lot of things on the list, but it's on the list. Then I get this pile here inside. I need two more bags of insulation down over there. And then this stuff. This stuff can go in start going up. It's gonna rain like heck here in the next day or two. Not that it matters. Rock wool doesn't soak up anything. But... There. Turkey's got one over there the other day. All right, it's been a busy morning. All of the insulation has been relocated. Everything in the cave is done. All the pallets that I deemed repairable have been repaired using parts from the ones that aren't. In case I ever want to sell some rock around here, which I do. I just haven't followed through. We got this wall here insulated. There's too many things that have to go in that one yet. And this is just a guess as to how much insulation is going to be needed down in here. And upon inspecting it, I think it's too much, but it is not outside anymore, so that's good to go. And then everything else is packed up above. Before I can do a bunch of stuff here, however, I need to install the bathroom vent lines and the plumbing and of course the plumbing we're waiting on bathroom fixtures going on month three now yeah I guess I guess I can start putting R30 up just have to leave myself a way to get in and because I can't I can't go from underneath in my first run so I'll have to leave the first bay open but I can go all the way across these bays on both sides just got to take all this apart in order to move it around and I don't want to we're back You hear the drum of rain on the roof, which surprises me a little bit. I would have thought with this much insulation, I, I wouldn't have been able to hear it quite so prevalently. I guess it's really only coming from the side that hasn't been insulated yet. the first substantial rain I've been here when uh, the entire roof's on. I don't have to worry. Well, that's not true. I got, I got water pouring in the uh, power access ports <laughs> down in the basement. Quite a bit of water coming through, but what are you going to do? It's an open ditch. So yesterday, I left this bay here open because these end runs can only be fed from the top. And my R15 hasn't arrived. Just doing a little quick calculations and it looks to me like I'm gonna have extra R30. So I'm contemplating just putting it up in there. I'd have three runs. I gotta do this one here and then that end one. But if I just do them, then I can then I can seal it up and that's it. But I don't have to worry about it quite yet. I can come the rest of the way across. As I said before, I really gotta put the vents and and plumbing stuff up in there before before I can do the bathroom ceilings. But I could definitely come out part way. 
so I could do a little bit of that and at least get an idea of how how much of a pain in the ass this is going to be. Got a lot of picking up to do. I'm I'm irritated with myself at how little I'm managing to get done during a day and I'm always listening to book tapes with the headphones so today I thought I would just put music on and see if I can tell any, any difference. Danny thinks I'm just driving or expecting to be able to drive myself too hard. I don't know. I really feel like accomplishing that plus moving the bags plus the last little bit down in there it was not a full day's work and yet it took up a full day. So I'm trying to figure out what that's it's got to be me, and I'm trying to figure out how that's going to all play together. Also, I totally have way too much in the basement. But such is life. Okay. Let's get on this. Let's get picking up and figure out what it's like up in there. Acrobat time. Having lunch a little early. I have to ignore the conversation in the background. I compromised and left the audiobook on, but put it on the radio. I don't know if it's helping or not. Okay, so I was working up there and I realized I gotta go all the way across here before I isolate myself. So I just did that. It looks rough, but it's sealed up well. Now I can go and do up there. The air flows across California's central what I'd like to do rises and accumulates in this thermals, square right here ascending currents of air as the thermals drift just to the test things warm air from the foothills propels them upward at high these will go sideways infusions of warmer air from and then and valleys send the other the stuff will go to 90 degree angle above where they need colder air it's a story this about destabilizing um, the atmosphere Countless climbing in Yosemite and getting caught by a, a thunderstorm and uh, subsequent electrocution and the rescue attempts and stuff. It's not bad. And we're done. I had some helpers stop by. I'm going to make it to the dump before it closes. I got to take off. So we got a bunch done. We got the double side of this entire wall insulated, although I can see a small crack. I need to stuff. We have that one big run all done. The entire ceiling, including the double insulation, is up on that. You know, there's some that need to be finessed a little bit, but not too bad. And then we got to start, anyways, over there. It's just really slow. Though it goes faster with people ferrying. Want to say hi? Ferrying insulation so I don't have to go up and down the scaffolding a mazillion times. But this is what I got left. I believe I have enough, but I believe it's going to be tight, which is fine because instead of doubling up with the R30 on this row right here, I used that dumpster picked R23 fiberglass, I think it is. So I'll use that on the other one. It's a fine use for it. I'll use that on that last side and then I can get that row stuck in there. Oh, we got some short blocks R30 up there yet still. We better pull those down and use those too. Okay. Gonna go to the dump. So from all of us to all of you, Thanks for watching.